Hey, Adriana. My slow self didn't consider the fact that um, it's going to be dark by the time 7.30 come and some of this needs to be done outside. So I'm trying to get started at least 10 minutes early so I can catch before the sunlight goes down. So, but before I start, I'm just going to show you guys a few supplies that's needed for this project. And the main thing is a tray. You get this tray from Dollar Tree for $1. And I like to use this chopping mat to put underneath when I'm doing the epoxy so that way it doesn't get all over my table even though I have some paper down. And also this rack I got from Dollar Tree I put it on top of the mat like that to catch any of the fallen epoxy when I epoxy the tray. You are also gonna need some gloves, some popsicle sticks for stirring the epoxy, a measuring cup for your epoxy, some small cups to measure the A and B part of your epoxy. You're gonna need some epoxy, of course. My bottles are all dirty because they was underneath the cabinet and sitting there for a long time. I haven't touched these bottles, so yeah. I'm gonna put that off to the side. You're gonna need some spray paint. Today I'm gonna do a um, 49ers, San Francisco 49ers tray. So I'm gonna be using red black and metallic gold spray paint always like to have some alcohol on hand and some alcohol wipes because i hate the epoxy touching my fingers it's hard to get off so i use the the alcohol to get it off if it happens to touch my hands um uh, some lighters this one is a standard lighter but it also has the where you can refill it. So my customers usually like to use the ones they can refill. You're just gonna take the, um, the label off of it and use that. A heat gun. I use a heat gun because I like to check the temperature of my epoxy to let me know when it's ready for me to pour it. Also, I like to measure my, well, weigh out my epoxy. So I have a scale here. This is optional. You do not need a scale. You do not need a temperature gun. That's optional. That's something I just like to use and I will show you how. Um, what else? I like to use Silhouette printable vinyl. To me, this is the best printable vinyl I have found so far. It prints, the color shows really nice on it. See here, I already printed out my decals. Hey, hey, baby, baby. She do not like people. My neighbors, just neighbor kids are outside playing and she don't like them out there. <laughs> so she's going to get locked back up. I don't even know how she got out. You're going to need a lighter. Well, a torch lighter. You're going to use this to pop the bubbles from your epoxy. And this box here, I use it to package my rolling trays. I got this from Michael's. It's called a photo frame box. I believe it's about, um, I can't remember the price. I believe it's about maybe $5. And then you can use a coupon to get a discount on it. But when I make my rolling trays and I put the decal on top of it to match the tray, customers love it. They love it. They Most of the time they only want it because of the box. So. That's a, a plus right there. If you can get these box from Michaels, they are usually always sold out. So you can check online and um, get it from there too. So that's all the supplies I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna go ahead and start spray painting this tray before the sun sets. I actually did one prior just in case I didn't catch the sunset. 
So I spray painted my ashtrays and I spray painted the tray red. Y'all hear my neighbor kids, they out there. <laughs> they gonna be loud. Y'all gonna hear them bad kids out there cussing and stuff. So you guys just spray paint your, your tray. So I spray painted the tray. It don't have to be perfect. Even if you still see the design in there, it's fine. You only need one coat and set that to the side and let it dry. I usually get the spray paint. It usually takes about 20 minutes to dry. It dries really fast. So here's one that I did already that's done. And what I like to do is use the Dawn. To create a design on there i like the marble look so i use yeah. usually do that with my trays it's almost like my little signature for my tr rolling trays and you're just gonna take it and you're gonna spray spray the ashtray and then i let it sit and let the bubble settle just a little bit before i spray it with my next color which is going to be gold, metallic gold. And you're going to take that and you're just going to spray the whole tray. Spray the whole ashtray. Oh yeah, and I also have a bucket of water sitting here. So you're going to take Take it, dip it in the water. And it's not like something you have to rush and hurry up and rinse off. It creates that marble look. And the same thing with the tray. It creates that marble look. Mm. So I like to do my trays like this. To me, it's just something different, something unique. It looks nice. And you can also do another spray with the black. You spray again. See, my trays are kind of wet right now, so I, the black will not probably take because it does have to dry. Just a little bit. See, I'm messing it up, trying to. So I'm gonna spray it again and try to see if it'll take the black without the tray being dry. And with the, the third color, you don't have to spray the entire tray. Just, you know, you don't want to cover up your gold. There we go. It did take, even with the tray being wet, the black still took. So once your trays are painted, you're just going to let them air dry. Because if you try to dry it with a napkin or something, you're going to smear the spray paint. So you're just going to let it air dry. So I did do a tray prior, and here is the dry tray. The one I just did actually came out better, though. And the ashtrays. Let me get some light in here, you guys. Give me one second to turn some light on.
So my light is not coming on. Let's see what's flashlight. Trying to get my ring light to come on. It's getting dark, so the, the light is getting a little dark over here in my corner. So these are the finished trays. And what I'm going to do is take my decal. I have a large one here and then one a little smaller. Then I have the two for the ashtray and then for the lighter. I'm going to give you guys the measurements for this in a second. So the smaller one is the one you're going to use for your tray. And you're going to stick it right there. Now you can also do this with vinyl and do layering, which I also do sometimes. And I actually like it better with the vinyl than I do with the printable vinyl. It just looks so much better, but they both are good. Let me try to put this up on my stand. Okay, hopefully you guys can see. Let me check. Okay, that looks good. So, can you see me? There's a delay. <laughs> I'm trying to watch my own live from my other phone, and it's a delay. And I'm over here tripping like, dang, they can't see me. So I'm just trying to get this um, printable vinyl sticker back and off. So take the backing off just like a regular sticker. Try to center it in the middle the best you could. And rub it real good and make sure you don't have any air bubbles. You don't want any air bubbles because the, the epoxy, it gets hot. It gets really hot. So that will cause your printable vinyl or your vinyl, whatever one you're using, to lift up before it sets. So you'll let it, you think you're all done, let it set, wake up the next day, and your vinyl then lift it up over the epoxy and it already set. It's nothing you can do. So you want to make sure that's pressed down really well and there's no air bubbles. And then I'm going to do the same with the ashtray. I'm going to put these two decals right here in the center of my ashtray, just like that. I'm going to get this sticker off. Okay, got that off. Just try to get it centered the best you could. I eyeball it. Usually once it's down, it's down because you don't want to keep having to lift it up. And that's what cause your um, paint to peel from your ashtray and your um, tray. Now these ashtrays, I found these um, 
at like a local moms and pop store 99 cent store in my area and it comes with two in a pack for one dollar so that's a good deal these trays are bomb right here so if you have like a moms and pops little discount 99 cent store in your neighborhood i will highly suggest you go check them because they are the ones who usually always have them all the time And I cut these out with my hand. I didn't use the Cricut this time because I need to change my blade. With the Cricut, you have a cleaner cut. But even with me cutting it out with my hands, you can't even really too much see that the cutout is not that great. See, it's already coming along. Looking good already. So I'm going to open this. Get this ready to do the epoxy. Now I know the rolling tray sets are not that difficult to do. The one thing that scares people and keep people from doing the rolling trays is the epoxy. Some people are afraid of using the, uh, the epoxy. I have this window, this um, wide open. I have the other window wide open. I would normally do this outside, but I just decided to set up right here at the, the window. And I do have a, um, one of them face masks, but yeah, I'm not about to use that today. I'm already over here hot and sweating, so put this away. So next I'm going to do the lighter have my little printable vinyl sticker here and my lighter I usually try to find out if my customer is left-handed or right-handed because that determines how they're gonna hold their lighter if they're right-handed they're gonna hold their lighter this way and you want whatever design facing outwards where outwards where whoever's near can see it so for a right-handed person i'll make sure my design is facing out this way and end it in the inside so all you do is wrap it around wrap it around the lighter perfect perfect fit So if your customer is left-handed, that feel awkward. You want to put it on the opposite side. So there you go. That's the lighter. And when I epoxy, I also epoxy the lighter. I don't bring it all the way up here. I just bring it just a little tad bit above where the printable vinyl is and a little bit below it. And then I just let it cure just with everything else sitting up like this so now I'm going to go ahead and mix this epoxy and get this tray all nice and shiny so I'm going to put my gloves on for this because I do not want this on my hands and my nails So the kids went inside the house. I don't hear them out there no more. So how I measure my epoxy, I weigh it out. So if I use um, grams, 
or milliliters whichever one you decide to use you just make sure they both measure the same as that so I'm going to use I'm going to use grams so when you put your cup on the scale my cup doesn't weigh anything at all but if it did you would tear it you would hit tear on your scale so that way it doesn't take the measurement of the cup it will only take whatever I put in the cup measurements so I'm going to pour A and I'm going to measure about 45 grams that's probably going to be too much but I'd rather have too much than too not enough And then I'm do the same with part B. Part B is the thicker, thicker um, part of the epoxy is very, very thick. A lot of people say you shouldn't weigh it out because the one is thicker than the other but i haven't had any problems i'm just so used to weighing everything out because i make candles also and it's a habit so that's why i do it but you do not have to do it that way you can take the little clear one ounce um cups like they put the sauce in because that's how i used to do it before too and the one ounce or the two ounce and you can fill it to the line both a and b and then put it in your big cup and mix it together you can do it that way also always mix a first and then the thicker one which is b on top and spray to make sure you get everything out of there sorry I'm not reading any of the comments or anything you know I gotta get used to being able to do a live and look at the comments or have my son help me if I can get him to help me without having to bribe him with money to help me so then you're just gonna mix mix slowly some people say mix slow so you don't get air bubbles and Honestly, no matter how slow I mix, how fast I mix, I always get air bubbles, no matter what. So, I just stir. Now, you're going to be stirring for a little while. Like, a lot of people never know when it's fully combined or if it's been mixed good, or they just say stir for five minutes. Just keep stirring for five minutes and then it'll be ready. The way I know it's ready is because epoxy is ready once it hits 90 degrees. That's why I use my temperature gun. Cause you can stir for five minutes and it still might not be at 90 degrees. And um, a lot of people always wonder why the epoxy never set up the epoxy have to be at 90 degrees so i stir and then i check the temperature right now it's at 84 degrees so i just keep stirring some people heat their epoxy up to speed up the process but you don't want to rush your craft. Just take your time and just do everything like it should be to avoid any mistakes. And you can always tell the tell those who rush and don't put they all into their craft because it doesn't 
turn out that great. So I just take my time. When customers order this rolling tray set, even though you just see me spray painting everything and Actually, this might be dry. Nope. It's I like to do mines in sections. So one day I will spray paint the trays, the ashtray, and let that dry overnight. And then the next day I will add my printable vinyl stickers or my vinyl, whatever I'm gonna put on the tree tray, I add it the next day. And then that same day I'll epoxy it and let that dry for 24 to 72 hours. And then once that is dry, I do the back of my tray. I spray paint the back of my tray. So a lot of people don't do the back of their trays, but I like to make it all look professional and neat and clean. And so I'll spray paint the back of my tray, give that a few hours to dry, and then I will also just do a thin layer, take, you know, just rub some epoxy on the back of it so everything looks professional and clean. Okay, it's at 87. And as you can see, I didn't stir the whole time. I stopped, I let it sit a little while. And you can also tell when it's almost ready because once it, it starts to heat up during the first stage, it gets really thin and runny like. And that's the first stage is heating up. And once it get past like almost to like 100 degrees, it starts to get hard. Once it starts to get hard, there's nothing you can really do from that point. You can try to heat it back up and melt it down a little bit, but once it hit that hardening stage, there's really nothing you can do. Eighty-nine degrees. We're almost there. Make sure you get the size, the bottom. And once it start to get start getting to 90 degrees, you can tell because then that's when you start smelling the fumes too. Before it heats up, you can't really smell the fumes. But once it starts getting close to 90 degrees, you can start smelling the epoxy. You can smell the fumes in it. And during the process of it setting is when you can actually smell all the fumes. And we are at 90 degrees. So with my silicone mat underneath here, I am going to make sure I have some space to put my lighter on there. Actually, I'm going to use both of them because I don't want my lighter to fall during the process. And when you epoxy your tray you want to make sure your table is leveled as much as possible because if it's not your tray will set uneven so one side will be heavier than the other side if you don't make sure that the table is labeled leveled so this is just how i set it up and to get ready to epoxy now you can use a silicone brush or you can use your hands. I'm gonna use my hands because I don't know what I did with my silicone brush. And just go all the way around the edges, down the middle. 
then you don't need that much in the trays. You don't want your trays to be too heavy because once this gets hard, it gets heavy. So you don't want to use that much in the ashtrays. Start with the ashtray. So with the ashtray, you're just going to take your finger and you're just going to rub and make sure you take the epoxy and cover every surface of the ashtray. You don't need that much. You just barely, you just rubbing the outside of the ashtray, the inner part. Just using your fingers and spreading it all around. Making sure it's enough that's covering the decal that's in the inside. And if you use one hand to hold and one hand to spread it, you don't have to worry about getting epoxy all over the bottom of the ashtray. I don't know if you can see that gloss on there. Because it's still a little dim in here. So while I'm doing this, I want to thank everyone who's watching. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you for watching. I don't have my drink today. But after I'm done, I'm going to go have some drinks for the friend at Chili's. This is my second time going to Chili's in my life. So, I'm going to have some drinks. Some light girly drinks because I don't drink like that. A margarita or something. The same thing, you're just going to spread the epoxy all over the tray. Make sure you get the corners. I like to do it with my fingers because you can feel how much epoxy is in one area. Like if it's too much in a the corner there, you will be able to feel. And you can just move it and even it out with your fingers. I always make sure I get the top, the rim of the tray the entire uh, the entire the entire border the rim outside the tray oh yep that's my son and he's playing 2k so he don't care about me being live he only care about winning his game so he does all the yelling put him and the dog out So this is why I do my trays and sections. Once the top um, cures and get hard and it's set, I do the back. And it takes about a couple of hours for this to harden and be set. It takes about 24 to 72 hours for it to be set completely. So sometimes it might feel hard on top, but it's not completely cured underneath. So if you put something on top of it it will leave an indent of whatever you put on top so for instance if, if i let this sit in the morning come back to it it feels hard i take my trays and i put it on top and try to package it by the time the customer get it and take the trays off the tray is barely it's going to be peeling off of it for one and then it's going to leave a ring on the tray from the bottom of the ashtrays because it wasn't completely dry. So always make sure your tray dries for at least 72 hours before you package it and send it to your customer. You want it to be completely dry. And I don't want to mess anything up, so I do the top first. After 24 hours, I do the back. Another 24 hours and it should be good. I'm gonna change my glove because now I'm gonna do the lighter.
me put on one glove and this is how I do the lighter. I just take my finger, dip it in the epoxy. You want to do this before your epoxy set too. I do it last because I want my epoxy to be a little bit setting already so it don't be as runny. And then you just take your finger and you just rub it down all the way from the front to the back. You don't really need that much at all. Don't um, do not epoxy the bottom, and don't come all the way to the top where the switch pushes down to to light. And you just keep rubbing it. If you see any bubbles? Just rub it with your finger. Yeah. And then I just set it on the, the mat. Yep, I dropped it. I should have put the double glove on. Now I got it on my fingers because I didn't want to put want to be lazy and not put two gloves on. I want to stick to my glove instead of sitting up. That's going to probably fall again. But, yeah, normally it sits up with no problem. But today it want to give me a hard time because it's Friday the 13th. I'm just going to blame it on that. So, that's basically it. That is long. Like, I don't know if y'all can see that gold in there. The black. Yeah. So, I'm going to challenge you guys. I want to see you guys rolling trays within the next week or two. Go ahead and make you guys roll and tray and post it in a group. And out of everyone that posts their rolling trays, I'm going to do a giveaway for you guys. So make sure you get your rolling trays done and post it in a group. And lastly, I'm going to do the box. Can't forget the box. So I don't know why people is afraid of doing rolling trays and dealing with the epoxy because it's not that scary. People try to scare you and say, oh, that, if this kid of mine, if this kid of mine don't shut up, y'all don't uh, witness, witness something today. How many of y'all got teen boys that play video games? I'm probably sure a few of y'all, but do they yell and scream? Like mine, dude. I don't want to put it on this table because it has some epoxy drip on it. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention is when I print out my decals, I usually print out two of each just in case I mess up. And also, so I won't be wasting any paper. But when I do the box decal, only one fits on the page if you're using Cricut. So the biggest you can go is like a 9.2. And then you just, you want to make sure you center this as much as possible because once it's down it is down there is no lifting it up and moving it because you will peel the cardboard off and mess your entire box up see i dropped the lighting 
shaking the table. That's why I like to have these um, alcohol wipes, just in case like that I can get this epoxy off my hands very quickly. So there's your box. And like I said, customers, most of my customers, when I make this for them, now I'm gonna let you guys know this on live. I don't sell the sports brand. I just make the rolling trays. Okay, now that we got that out the air. Most of my customers, they really just want the box. The male customers, they love the box with their, um, you know, their logo, their name, whatever they want to say on there, okay? So, this one is not for sale. I am not selling this one. I am going to give this to my brother. He is a huge San Francisco fan. So, this one it will be going to my brother. And that is it. Like, it is not that hard. It don't take that long. You just want to do it in sections and make sure everything is completely dry. Make sure the spray paint is dry before you put your decals on. Make sure the top layer epoxy is dry before you flip it over and do the back. And also, when you do the back... I didn't paint the back of these. So when you um, do the back of your trays... You can go ahead and add your business name, your logo, or whatever you want on the back of the tray, and then epoxy it. Because I had I I didn't used to do that. I used to make my trays and sell them, and then I would see them all on Facebook and people saying that they made the tray. And I know my trays. I know how I make them because, like I said, just like I do the marble look, it's certain ways that I do my trays. But you can go ahead and put your logo on the back before you do the epoxy. And that's it, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. Um, I'm going to go back and read the comments. If I move too fast and it was something you want me to go over, I will do it again. Um, a different design. Actually, I, I am going to do another one because I do want to show you guys this. Now, I did this, I did a, okay, what happened? Did y'all pause? I did a Hennessy tray. Now, I don't know if I lost service or not. Did I lose service? No. Okay, so, I did a Hennessy tray for my dad for his birthday last year. And what I did is, what I did, if you can see that, let me see if I can get some light going. So let me hurry up, you guys. It's getting dark. So I did a Hennessy tray for my dad last year. I'm going to post the pictures in the group. And how I did this tray is I took some, um, some wallpaper type paper that looked like wood. And I put it on the tray. And I painted the back to match. So it all blended in very good. And I put the Hennessy on there with the vinyl. And then I epoxy everything. So I'm going to post pictures in a group of how I did that. And I will come back and do another live on how to do it that way. Um, I'll have some light set up next time. Because um, it's getting kind of dark and I don't have any light in this area where I'm at right now. So thank you guys for joining. I'll read the comments and I'll see you guys. Talk to you guys later.